Welcome to DrupalCon 2021. And uh, this is a case study of Find It Cambridge, a platform built by Agaric Cooperative. We're based in Boston, Minneapolis, Managua, and have a sister partner in Hamburg, Germany. Um, we've spent the last couple of years building out this platform with the city of Cambridge. It started uh, with the City of Cambridge Kids Council and our friend Leo Bird, who was a professor at MIT that ran a company called Terra Vaz. And we worked with him to start the project with Nancy, um, doing a lot of forward work before even touching the code or building anything. We um, just uh, worked with them to create surveys to find out what the citizens actually need and what they would use and what they would like. Because as you know, it uh, issued templates for websites that um, supposedly help citizens find programs and organizations. And um, they seem to be a cookie cutter site that are mostly a fail because it's very complex, people can't really navigate it. And the resulting um, horror is that a lot of programs get canceled because no one could find them. So find it. And uh, we are building this out as a template so that it could be used for any city or town in the world. Um, as you know, Drupal is multilingual, so that would not be a problem. And we've had a lot of fun working with all the people that have made this possible. And uh, I'd like to thank Eric, uh, Ben Melanson, who uh, started his career in Boston and uh, now is a Boston transplant. He's living in uh, the Midwest, um, a wonderful place where he can do a lot of uh, groundwork as well as um, web work because um, as you know as developers we all need a good mix of ground um, real work and development work or else we become a virtual head on, on a screen everywhere so um, i'd like to introduce ben and uh, he has put together this wonderful presentation and um, take it away ben thanks nikki um yeah so we were essentially charged with um, creating a platform um, for uh, not, you know, for people interacting with a city. Like usually one of government websites is for interacting with the government. Um, and that's precisely what um, Find at Cambridge was trying to get away from. Um, and we, we built it as a Drupal platform, now moved to Drupal 9 um, so that it could be reproducible elsewhere. So anyone who is in any city that thinks this might be useful, please let us know. Um, we'd love to just talk to, um, you know, any, you know, whatever group in the city, whether it's sort of like the elder council, the youth council, or anything like that, um, to have a look. Um, and I am just seeing, like, Mickey, what page do you, yeah, sorry, the monitor could tell me what page they see on the screen. It's not like the one that I see on my own screencast is not the one that's um, showing my screen. So maybe I just have to roll my mouse over to get it to recognize. Okay. Yeah, but, now uh, you're on the front page. The front page, okay. So it's super delayed, but maybe just moving my mouse makes it happen. All right, sorry about that. It's that internet um, thing, yeah. getting in the way again. No, sorry. So, we will be presenting highlights from the research conducted before we built anything, um, and then iterations of the design mock-up testing, what we learned from initial and ongoing um, testing of, with the users, with the audience of the site, um, including um, where a fair number of people were using it at a library computer lab, and then iterative movements continuing, um, including some of the more ambitious ones when we moved from Drupal 7 to Drupal eight and now nine, and then just the challenge of balancing client feedback with user feedback. Um, and we'll suggest some 
strategies for making sure user needs are what's prioritized, um, how to be a user advocate no matter what your role in a project is, and some of the client developer decision processes and what we've learned and how to do this. This is process and um, specific improvement focused. What we're not including is technical detail, project management tips, epiphanies on efficient, efficiency or um, how to obtain budget for these types of things. Um, so Cambridge is a city of 120,000 people and a large number And a large number of um, a large number of not for profits. So, um, and universities that also offer programs generally available to people. And of course, the library system. And Find at Cambridge brings all of that and puts it in one place. And this is there we go. This is what the site uh, looked like in the Drupal seven version. Um, it was born out of collaborative discussions with diverse stakeholders, residents and representatives from the city, schools, community-based organizations, and that you know, valuable feedback hide, highlighted the need for Find at Cambridge to serve as an easy to use multilingual signal point portal. Um, one focused the whole time on the build with, not for. Um, so the primary group of stakeholders were service providers. Um, but of course, the ultimate users of the city are parents and caretakers and residents in Cambridge. Um, as Mickey said, Nancy Tower and Leo Bird um, led the initial vision. Nancy Tower is executive director of Cambridge Kids Council and Leo Bird as director of Lemon Creative Learning Program at the MIT Media Lab, um, coming out of similar work he'd been doing in Brazil. So the research influenced everything. The domain name of the site, the top level domain of the site was chosen through research. Informal user testing of the domain name revealed that people expected more useful information from a .org than a .gov. So it is finditcambridge.org. Um, I'm sort of hoping that that's changing in Massachusetts, um, given the amazing overhauls of mass.gov and boston.gov. Um, since the time of this research, um, I think people will be expecting more of the government sites, um, but still, um, you know, given the focus on not just government resources, uh, findatcambridge.org gives people the best sense of what they're going to find there. Um, and so who is this for? This is for parents looking for activities for the children visitors for program managers, administrators, service providers at partner organizations who are responsible for keeping their site content and events up to date. Um, the project lead interviewed 220 service providers as part of initial research, um, and then site administrators. Um, this is the importance of researching needs for each type of user, and the relative importance of each type of user can vary depending on the phase of the project. So, when we start out building it for service providers because we need to get their content in um, and then focused on users and yeah, the uh, site administrator, the, the find at Cambridge manager has sort of the most um, constant use of the site. So they get a lot of input in, but we try to um, yeah, prioritize other needs um, and they're, they're usually okay with that. Um, and research methods um, included, uh, and this is largely led by um, City of Cambridge and Cambridge Kids Council with help from Code for Boston um, and students from Harvard for Public Health also reaching out and talking to other sites, a semester long project. And then um, with our designer, we built detailed set of personas of people looking for events, program services, um, and base these personas on Cambridge demographics, and then uh, recruited people from a cross section of socioeconomic status and languages spoken, um, and ultimately you know, surveyed over 2000 people. And um, 
again, sorry for the long delay on the slide. I don't know what's up there. Um, and then testing, um, we actually had people test putting information to form, had the providers try that. Um, 220 service providers and about 2,000 people interviewed and or surveyed, and then um, about 400 uh, parents and caregivers uh, interviewed in the course of research for this site. So that's the first tip. Iterate on what someone else has built. Um, we looked at what else was out there in this space. Um, and, you know, a lot of it showed that the, the challenge was keeping information up to date. Somerville Help, a uh, town right next to Cambridge, um, had both trouble keeping things up to date. It had um, automatic translation without it being clear to people that it was automatic translation. And some people were, um, set with that. <laughs> um, and um, a lot of usability problems were identified by talking to um, residents and administrators of other places that had tried things like this. So, yeah. Um, accessibility was shown to be a challenge for a lot of um, similar sites. Um, if you're building on Drupal, you already have a heads up. It has a lot of built-in accessibility features like the skip to main content past the menus. Um, and, you know, this, of course, you know, when you're aiming to make a site for a whole city, um, so it's always particularly important for municipal governments and for the people we're trying to serve. So in the comparative analysis, key points identified um, were there, um, you yeah, know, Lots of people thought things looked good on first impression, sometimes thought it was a little too text heavy. Um, a lot of the other competitors were not mobile friendly. Um, calendars did not fit on screens um, and people didn't know necessarily how to search or how to filter. Um, in general, oh man, sorry again, there's the correct screen. Maybe you're seeing the right one and I need to hover over my own thing anyway. Um, so problems with automatic translations. This is the original English. And this is the translation into Spanish. Um, this project is located in Massachusetts. Mass in this context, context is short for Massachusetts. <laughs> when we say mass farmer's market. Um, and I'm fascinated that the algorithm seems to have decided that it would not translate it as mercados de campesinos, but, um, you know, correct, decide that was not a correct translation, but decided that masses of people was fine to throw in front of leaving farmer's markets in English. Um, and so we, there was no budget for the city to move away from um, automatic translation. But it did have, um, we did, were able to iterate on our initial version of using Google Translate to, um, to have sections that we told Google not to translate. You can actually put in your HTML um, uh, classes that, um, tell automatic translators or Google Translate in particular, don't worry, we've got this. Um, and so we, um, we've we done that with um, some titles and um, and plan to do it with more text that the city commits to, to fully translating, um, you know, not for individual programs, but for the, the site-wide um, types of things um, because, you know, the, uh, you know, the platform name itself was being translated in a few too many places. All right. Design. Design, yeah, even though we call them development sprints, design is when you can really sprint. Um, that is what the big benefit is. You iterate before you build. Um, and so many decisions of crucial importance were made before we configured a single content type. 
And you know, most of this presentation is about iterating after you build, but like one of the key lessons is to do as much as you can before. You know, standing on the shoulders of giants is especially used in free software. Um, but whatever your accomplishments suffer, you're building on the work of others. And it really plays Drupal strength to build your projects standing on two sets of giants. All the people who wrote Drupal to be an amazingly flexible content management system and a team of people researching the specific needs of your project. Um, and that's what we got with our uh, design-led uh, research team. And uh, so that was all led by um, Todd Linkner, a designer that we prefer to work with. Um, has been working with interaction design for 15 and Drupal for nine or 10 at this point. Um, he had 297 messages that I was also seated seat on um, that he dealt with in this project in addition to in-person um, meetings. It was a really intensive thing. So design covers the role of tools, material properties of the web, um, you know, experiencing how users experience things and um, Todd's approach, programmatic thinking. So um, created a really data-driven wireframe. Um, this is like a static site generator allowing um, sort of rapid prototyping of how things are set up. And this is what um, Todd and us tested um, against people. Um, a very initial approach had people uh, entering, just entering their information into a spreadsheet, um, you know, for, for all the kind of information we'd collect. And of course, it, it proved too flexible. Um, people could put all sorts of things in there, um, but it gave good initial feedback for how to um, create a form with more focus, um, which I think you all are seeing, yeah. Um, and yeah, if you're, if you're not seeing slides advanced, sometimes reloading helps on your end. Um, is not an option for me. And um, so focus down in on the form. Um, and I personally think that at this point you could already be using Drupal for prototyping, um, but there's um, lots of good things to use and this project Contentful was, was the, the tool used. Um, and so what we're driving towards is sharing ideas between the content, the design, and ultimately the development Design system is a structured, parameterized system of documents, of components that are able to interact um, and can have various relationships to one another. Um, so Todd never concerns himself with nuanced differences between a wireframe and a prototype. Wireframes and abstract documents um, may not easily be understood. IA, IA in, information architecture documents may not be under, easily understood. Um, the wireframe as an iterative, unpolished prototype is, is the approach we take. Um, the wireframe is sketching code in, is sketching in code and in content. Um, so just have something that provides the structure um, and lets you iterate on those changes. So, um, and then you create a, a library of standard elements to plug in to the more generic wireframe. Um, and all this is driving at is showing is more powerful than telling. Um, every client has a bias from the previous websites, from their work, from thinking they have to translate everything into visual terms to talk to a designer. Um, if you take the time to experience the client, experience the users, ultimately um, terminology of wireframe versus prototype is not that important. Um, you learn from the design while it's being processed. And so, find that Cambridge had no content when we began this project, so we had to solicit content. As noted, the structure for Google Spreadsheets was too loose, um, but uh, a more focused web form um, was able to do what we needed to do. And so putting all that together, um, yeah, the, the wireframe already had, already had much look that the first iteration of the site ultimately um, had. And this is what was um, 
tests on sometimes on paper um, with people. And, and now at this point, we are ready to hand off from design to development. Um, you know, everyone is needed in these, these races. Um, so we're developing with the incredible fortunate situation of tons of research being done before anything was built. Um, as I said, that allowed things to be quite quick. And then development just feels so slow in comparison to the design stages, um, even building on something that gives you so much like Drupal. Um, it feels like you're in a one-legged stack race, um, but at least the design, um, you know, the design is regularly reacting to feedback. Um, and I, you know, I mentioned it later, but, um, you know, in our sort of mistakes column, but like not focusing hard enough on tightening up the iterations and getting feedback, um, you know, allowing our development phase to, to go on for too long. Like, yeah, this is known, this is agile, like stick to your sprint, stick to your demo, whatever state it is and get in front of some people for testing. Um, and just, you know, really always want to reinforce that, um, you know, at our best, we kept iterations tight and got feedback quickly. Um, at other times we didn't. So um, we iterate, we developed with an installation profile that just brought in some of the content. We used migrate module actually for that. Um, and that way we didn't have to wait on the client to enter content. Um, and we can throw out a whole, you know, structure, um, you know, just completely change um, how the site's built um, while still retaining all the information, all the content that um, had been gathered. And so we just had the, an installation profile that any developer could burn down um, and spin up. So um, this early deployment readiness and iterations um, do not mean your client is your tester. Um, they try to do things with BHAT um, and to do internal testing. Um, and then in addition to our client, we always try to bring in uh, at least a little bit of user testing on each um, round. That's usually closing a loop after it's deployed live. Um, we we do a little, you know, we get out into the community and get a little more information from people. So I'd just like to add something that um, fortunately we got really good at sack races. But the other thing is uh, there is a Q and A tab on the right. If you guys have questions, we're going through the slides. Please put them in the Q&A and I'll be keeping an eye on that. Thanks, Ben. Um, and so the best way to communicate um, a design vision to a developer, just seven letters, HTML, CSS. Um, yeah, if you can get a, a designer who can operate in those terms, that is excellent. At other points in the process, we also use the um, use Figma and are using the open source pen pot alternative to Figma also to um, keep sort of a, a public um, design guide um, separate from the site. But on this and other projects, um, having that, the styles um, be in the language of the web um, is, has been the clearest and fastest um, development loop. So um, there are technical and user experience implications of having two separate series of age ranges, which were very much necessary because many of the groups we served um, thought in terms of grades um, rather than ages. Um, and so you know, our approach was to expose the content modeling concepts that um, people are smart enough for that. Um, and ultimately clients need to understand, you know, the underlying model to make effective use of the site. Um, but, um, you yeah, know, that's, and I stand by that as a first round of iteration. So like everyone working on it gets a deeper understanding, but user testing showed that um, it confused people. Um, so uh, it was simplified from indicating um, 
sort of grades to um, even though we collected those um, for use in filtering if needed, we are only showing um, ages because uh, research with parents showed that that's how they thought of their children um, <laughs> by age and not by what grade they were in. Um, and this is great to get this kind of feedback and make the change. Um, and this was the front page of Find It was grouping um, um, opportunities by age. Um, and that we've actually moved further away from that because, um, you know, further research with parents and caregivers has shown that, you know, they're initially thinking, they're initially searching not necessarily for a single child, um, or they're not thinking about that, the age first, they're thinking about the kind of activity. Um, and so, you know, we basically, it's it's better to get people into the list of activities and then let them filter by age really easily than it is to sort of say like, you know, th this didn't speak to people, like it didn't draw them in. Um, you know, this is something they wanna be able to filter by, but it's not um, what gives them the idea. So the front page now is um, types of activities and that kind of thing. All right, so. Um, we did not forget about the service provider in our um, uh, user testing. Um, of course, <laughs> they have to use the site all the time. Um, and so instead of um, a user profile page when people log in, the default um, for Drupal, um, which is not of any relevance to the site, you know, people are logging in. Uh, frequently the institution name, uh, maybe their own name, but their individual profile is meaningless. What matters is their organization, their programs, their events. Um, and so that is um, what's now on the dashboard. Um, this is the older version. We're using the Clara theme now, but we're still doing the same, um, same idea. So have you ever been in a situation where you're thirst on the way or delete something you think immediately? A huge mistake. Um, the amount of information that um, that, uh, that, that, that clients, that service providers have to put in made um, accidental deletion of content uh, pretty devastating. So we just took away the option to delete. Um, <laughs> so you always the administrator at least has the opportunity to um, dive into the garbage chute or digital equivalent and stop things from being lost forever. Um, so with dozens of service providers managing content on the site, mistakes are bound to happen. And the worst case scenario is accidentally deleting a node um, because in Drupal when a node is deleted is gone forever. Um, in Drupal 7, we use the kill file module to do soft delete. In Drupal 8, um, the trash module was lagging, what we actually ultimately did was implemented it with um, a workflow. Um, and so there's two huge pieces of what we're doing here that make this work. First of all, we implemented uh, require unpublish so that all of the required fields are only required when you publish. As long as you have a title, you can save. And in fact, we also added um, auto save so that um, even if you don't save, it's still being saved for you. Um, and you, know, you still can't publish until all the required fields are provided. And there are a lot um, for service providers. Um, but the delete button here is actually um, a, a workflow state button. And so the final piece of this is a module called workflow buttons, which um, is what I made, which takes um, changes in workflow states and presents them as buttons instead of um, drop downs. Um, this is designed for the Clara theme. Flourishes like the trash can icon may work differently. Um, your mileage may vary. Um, but for this, having a uh, be something being deleted as a workflow state, um, it's really great. And so, uh, yeah, full site admin can still delete content, but content editors, service providers, um, nobody else can. So this is, you know, our probably our biggest 
uh, service provider um, user experience improvement um, was like after someone deleted content, we wanted to make sure that never happened again. <laughs> ah, Kaizen is continuous improvement. Uh, that's overselling a bit what at least we could accomplish with a small team, um, you know, one to two developers um, and then, you know, one and a half um, full time equivalents on the um, Cambridge side. You know, we had a bigger team when designing it, but um, you know, once once it's going, you want you want to keep doing improvement, um, but you can't can't actually be doing uh, two week sprint iterations on a small maintenance budget. Um, but you can keep collecting the needs um, and prioritizing and um, making those improvements as you can. So most of the regular improvements falls in the category simply. Uh, meeting expectations, closing the gap between what a person uh, expects using the site and what the site delivers. Um, so power users reported not finding organizations with terms they expected, specifically when searching for words that were in the title or description of programs that the organization provided, um, but not the organization itself because the person entering in the organization hadn't like written much of a description. Um, and so, you know, getting that feedback, we started putting the, um, uh, you know, aggregating all of the programs into the organization um, when searching. And uh, we're using Solar for research, but this part is done pretty much on the Drupal end, just in the view mode, uh, in, in the search view mode, including its child um, organizations. So um, as we're saying in user testing, go where users are. In this case, took us to a computer lab of a library. Um, listening to people is the very essence of the UX process. Um, and you know, researching testing with real users in person, um, which is much harder now, is fantastic until you see that the library is using Internet Explorer 11. So the first version of this site had to support that. Um, fortunately, in the latest boost, uh, we were able to drop that. Um, another great thing we learned watching people in Cambridge is that they don't know what their neighborhoods are called. Um, half the city has no idea where Agassiz is or if Wellington Harrington is one neighborhood or two, or if or why neighborhood nine and area two are official neighborhood names, um, and if they're on the same number scale or what's going on here. These are all the actual official names in Cambridge. Um, but. This was a good example of how most decisions made with user experience in mind um, often entails a whole lot of work that isn't necessarily seen. So um, we actually just recently released it out to the contrib world, um, the um, SVG select module. So just, um, you know, we upgraded to Drupal 9 and everything um, and finally released that into the world since we've been using it for five years and Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 as a custom module. Um, but it just allows um, the selection on a map um, or any uh, SVG rather than um, having to look at only words. So one of the biggest problems is out of date information about events and programs. That will drive people away. That's what we learned from looking at other sites. It's what we learned um, from talking to um, users. Um, the, there's several approaches we took to this. Um, a big one was just to put up a big banner at the top. <laughs> this program has not been updated in more than a year. Um, and we recommend you verify the information with the contact. Um, just, you know, so the search engines can still find it. People can still find it. It's deprioritized slightly in search, but if you get here, it's like this one still might work, but fair warning. Um, another feature added is to email the um, service provider when their um, organization is no longer, um, when they haven't updated it in a certain amount of time. And then the other method we had, um, at first a prominent report as outdated or inaccurate um, 
a feature at the top, um, but we replaced that with that banner. Um, you know, not, you know, replaced, like it always said, yeah, whatever. And so basically like this button was both too prominent and not prominent enough. Like we didn't like it implying that things were potentially inaccurate when there was no reason for people to think it was. Um, so that's why we preferred the banner. Um, you know, people would, you know, some, uh, not too many, but some users would be like, like look at the exclamation point and be like, does this mean it's inaccurate? And also it was one of the first things they saw before they could even assess the thing for themselves. So now at the very bottom of the description, first of all, they put the exact time it was last updated or exact date it was last updated. And then we just have, is this page inaccurate or updated? Please let us know. Um, you know Soften it a bit, um, but still for someone who's actually looked through the information um, already and wants to give feedback, it's really easy. And that's um, also been updated to go to the service provider immediately, cutting down on work for the site manager. Well, the site manager is still CC'd so they can handle it. Um, and then you know, also some places still don't have all the content information in, so it'll only go to the contact manager in that part. And also just full disclosure, this is just an email link right now, which doesn't work for everybody. But again, um, yeah, iterative UX, like this now gives something for most people <laughs> um, without even, you know, even though it's quite easy to add a web form, like this was easier. And when we're prioritizing from a, over a million different, um, not a million, it's an open, it's an open issue queue. You can go look at it. I think it's like, a few hundred um, open issues right now, but when you're prioritizing from a large number of possible improvements, um, you know, doing a little bit is better than doing nothing. Um, another huge thing um, that watching people and looking at the analytics will tell you, um, performance is part of the user experience. How fast the content loads on the site is an important part um, for every visitor. This one was loading far too much um, information. So this was just a back end improvement we made um, to even if something had uh, 50 programs to still load um, quickly. And then um, huge lesson, and it's you know, always harder as you get farther from the design stage to maintenance. Um, you have to keep working to include um, people who use the site in the process, in the experience. So I think of this as listening. The, the danger is listening to the client more than the citizenry. <laughs> we can use such terms uh, when we're working with the government, um, working for the government, working for a whole town. Um, and I've, I've said, given the same presentation in front of our, our clients who are very, very wonderful. Um, you know, the philosophy is learn, listen, and loop back over things as many times as you have. Because as, no matter how awesome your clients are, um, if they want their site to be the best it can be for the people who the site is for, you need the end users to always be part of the loop. Um, and with the development team knowing from them, them directly. Um, and we've been really lucky to have clients that, um, you know, first of all, have easy access to their users, anyone in the city, um, and second, I've been very willing to um, organize any, you know, and so just as a tip, like if you are doing it for municipal government, um, look for local um, orgs that can help. Um, Code for America has chapters everywhere. Code for Boston was involved in the initial research and was again in the second round of research here. Um, so, it, you know, really helped um, the city of Cambridge do more research than um, they could have afforded to do otherwise. Um, and it's also you know, a good way of, um, you know, trying to use the, uh, you know, sometimes they'll be not for prop, you know, they'll be like design sprints or build sprints, um, you know, it, involving a lot of people in learning rather than trying to build something in a weekend, um, but actually learning what should be built 
can be a, a way to make those kinds of events much more useful because it's one of those places where a lot of a lot of hands really does make lighter lifting um, unlike some parts of development where the mythical man month uh, does mean that just adding 10 developers doesn't make things 10 times faster um, so what could we have done better um, the user research still could have been a lot more efficient um, you know, uh, as much as it was great to have these huge um, research projects, um, having a little bit at a time spread out would probably have, uh, you know, gotten better results with the same amount of work. Um, changes <laughs> really should not be allowed until um, end user testing. Too many changes were driven by um, a client or project manager thoughts. Um, so it's like once they see it, they change their mind. And it's like their thoughts may be good, but you know, we built it one way because of decisions that were made. It shouldn't be undone until um, it's it's actually tested in its real world environment by people. Um, and iterations, um, as I said before, often went too long and then failed to incorporate user testing. So tightening that up is key continuous research is the way. Um, and then, you know, you don't have to talk to people every time you can watch what they do. So we use Google Analytics, um, show the main menu is overlooked. Um, the directory, um, which the first version of the site had had tons of page views, but a high bounce rate, which meant that people went to it because they weren't finding what they're were looking for. So it's bad for the rest of the site. But then this random listing of all organizations gave them nothing. It was really there because the providers wanted a list of organizations and it was just a red herring for users. So that's gone in the current version of the site. Um, seasonal based searches are popular um, and we have not yet addressed that, but I'm really looking for a seasonal based search and a high percentage of entry into the site is from Google search results. Not as high as probably on many sites because a fair number of people do know about finditcambridge.org and go to it directly. There was a pretty good public campaign, but it's still, you know, it has to be signed for. Heat maps, really nice. Um, uh, we used Hotjar for this, but there are a number of services. Um, we learned that people do use filters, um, that they do switch from events and programs and vice versa, um, but way too many people are going all the way down to the bottom and clicking next. Um, literally nobody gets to the footer, um, which is great. You can just overstuff the footer if you want to. Um, it's, uh, it's basically free space um, to uh, put uh, anyone's priorities in um, without it affecting anyone, any user's experience. Um, so, I mean, largely we're learning that we needed to um, improve the relevancy of the results, but also, um, giving people a way to improve the results while they're looking at them. Um, so not that many people were, um, you know, going back up to the filter. Some people didn't fully filter. Um, you know, people are really staying as usual at the top of the page. Um, and so in the redesign, like you still have all the results, you know how many, um, but the, the ways of um, narrowing them down are focused a little bit more. Um, and constant struggle for results relevance. Um, and I'm just going to finish real quick and please throw in any questions like Mickey said, and we will take them. Um, I think you can also ask on mute. And then um, water parks were suggested, like there are a lot, there's a lot of water parks in Cambridge, which is fantastic. Um, but they were sort of dominating the search results. Um, so one way of fixing that in the new site was we actually created a whole new content type. Programs and events um, continued to rank higher. We created another event of content type called places, which would by default rank lower than that. So water parks became places. And then organizations are last um, because generally people um, we'll filter specifically for organizations when they're looking for that. It's all about programs and events on the site. And I would love to do weather and seasonal dependent um, <laughs> search results, but that's uh, still
still uh, something to do later. Um, curated listings of things will help with our SEO um, and is probably the next big thing we're gonna be doing. Um, but just wanna show that the site can definitely uh, uh, help people find things. We only knew about this dance party um, because we were um, uh, working on the site um, <laughs> and we all went to it. Um, so <laughs> everyone here worked on the site except for Dan Fight in the corner, Hong Kong. He's a great developer, but didn't happen to work uh, with us on this site. Um, and so it's been so much fun and I look forward to continuing to iterate on improvements um, on this, the experience people have when using the finditcambridge.org website. Um, and if you live, work, or play anywhere other than Cambridge, um, please um, be in touch with us about um, potentially working on the site. You know, every site um, on, a, on a site for your thing, our whole idea is to have it a platform. So all of the mistakes and problems that we learned from on uh, Planet Cambridge, because uh, no matter how exhaustive the planning approach we are, um, things will change. Um, so as we all know, no plan survives contact with the enemy and the enemy is us. And so um, what you have coming on going next um, is, um, you know, really trying to um, move everywhere, we find it everywhere, um, move to more cities. So please um, do, uh, be in touch with us. We're going to keep on iterating, keep on making it a great platform. Um, and if you're finding, you know, just the sheer number of improvements that can be made at any given time for a site daunting, take inspiration from this bunny rabbit in Cambridge, Massachusetts, pick one strand and start on it. Um, and here's our contact information. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ben. Um, I, I would just like to add that um, this platform is a wonderful opportunity for freelancers or even people who work in local government that don't have tech experience to present it to um, a team at, in the town or city where you live. And a Garrick would be happy to supply the back end capacity and help you in implement the site anywhere in the world. Um, it, it leaves a lot of room for people who aren't super deep developers or back-end developers of Drupal to work with a team that does that and thereby learn more. That's how I learned about Drupal, um, working with people on projects where I knew nothing and a developer would help guide me through things. So um, I'm really impressed at how it can open an opportunity for a person who does not have tech experience. Um, as I said, you can ask a Garrick <clears throat> to be your backend capacity or any Drupal developers um, that have experience even in some of the areas and a Garrick could supply backend capacity to them. Or it may be a very experienced Drupal developer or someone who has taken a role in our um, trek through the years of building this platform and has some knowledge about it. So it doesn't leave people out who are, you know, not backend or heavy developers of Drupal. A site builder could easily get a contract um, with a city. Well, not easily get a contract. Well, a site builder could easily do the front end work on this, working with a Garrick. And uh, that's a really, really good keen way to get into doing this. So if you have local contacts in your city government, um, send us an email, send us a note. We could possibly help you uh, work that work that out. Um, 100% free software theme, everything else. It's built on the Drutopia platform that's built on Drupal. Um, but really that just means that you know, you can enable more features and it just works. Like Cambridge is not using blogs or campaigns or any of that stuff, but it would work fairly well um, with it if we did. So all of these are their own modules on people.org. Um, 
but the, the profile and the dev site and everything else, um, or the development environment, 100% built into the open. The 197 issues are all public. Um, <laughs> 197 issues that are still open. Um, so it's, yeah, it's it's been fun. Yeah, Drutopia is a wonderful platform also um, built by Agaric and other um, Drupal developers. Lily. Lily, with um, who has also developed some other wonderful distributions of Drupal. Um, so, and we have open Drutopia meetings every Tuesday at uh, around one o'clock. Um, well, it's once a month now. We been we've slowed down on doing them every week but um that could go back up again if there's enough interest or questions or people can you can call a meeting and ask us to be there someone will show up so that's uh just send agaric ask at agaric.coop an email and uh, we'll send you info on joining a drutopia meeting it's all mickey coordinating the court community stuff it's, it's pretty <laughs> fun it's pretty fun so I'll put our email in the chat just because it was on a slide that went by. And thank everyone for attending. Hope you're having a great time at DrupalCon. Drupal GovCon. <laughs> All the cons are great. I mean, uh, I haven't been to a bad Drupal con or camp, have you? <laughs> I haven't been to one where I haven't met someone really interesting either. So. I'm going to do the chat relay feature, chat roulette feature on uh, often. Yeah, <laughs> tried that yet. Not as not as good as in person, but no. All right. Yeah, I missed the hallway track in person. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Yes. So, if anyone has any questions, this is the time to ask them, or as I put our email in the chat, send us a note. I think we're just right under the time limit. We managed to fill an hour. All right, thank you all. Enjoy the rest of uh, Drupal GovCon. Oh and join the GitLab. Sign up on our GitLab and uh, see. They want to get deep into stuff, but it's nice to know that yeah. you, know, you won't be working on things alone on this platform. Yes. You can get a good idea of the breadth and depth of the work looking through the GitLab. this new idea. So we'll just stay here and pump information at you until we're kicked out. Because mm -hmm. that's what we roll. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I take that from the old punk rock days where we were the last people in the bar at 3 a.m. and <laughs> the bouncers had to remove us. And of course, this is recorded, so you'll be able to uh, enjoy it at your leisure and share it with your friends. Like I said, if you know someone in local government, um, shoot this to them and uh, encourage them to get in touch with us, to see how we could help them implement it in their city or town. I didn't even talk about the In Other Words module, which just Ooh. getting features. So if people check all, it converts it to all. If people check to adults, it actually converts it to ages, adults, because people found it looked weird when it said young adult and adult and senior adult. <laughs> um, well, of course, in other words, already made it would sort of be young adult, comma, adult and senior adult. Um, but um, yeah, just lots of tweaks just to make things so you're speaking to people in their their language, both literal 
um, and uh, more figuratively. More back end secrets, Ben. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> this is good. The sneak peek behind the curtain. It's just, it's just so much um, people do, but the duration, um, the repeating um, capability is what has just been um, added to um, to make it easier for service providers to um, to create recurring events. We didn't do that way originally because we had to, first of all, there were some events that didn't have simple rules. Um, so you still needed the repeated date feature, but now you can have like, you can say this repeats in a normal way. Um, this repeats, you know, for three weeks on Tuesdays um, and not have to um, create it, you know, especially if it's actually, you know, repeats, you know, forever. Um, or repeats after, you know, 40 weeks. Um, but, you know, for the, for the weird one, you can add an additional one, but we couldn't do that initially because we were bringing in events from the library, which um, it's multi occurrence events were um, each as an individual thing. And I looked forever for a library that would convert a random list of dates into an R rule. An R rule is sort of the official way that recurring dates are handled in calendaring systems. Um, and there just isn't any. Um, so I resist the urge to create one, um, but we've moved to sort of the best of both worlds where if someone is creating a straightforward recurring event, they can do it. Um, the smart date module in Drupal then on the back end creates an actual um, date field, uh, you know, multi-date field for each one of these occurrences so that all of your search and filter works like it always does. Um, and these things just work the same. Um, but it has meant, you know, completely re-implementing the, um, the listing of, of events um, to, um, uh, to, to the way it's output, because we've always tried to make it, you know, as clean and nice as possible. Um, and so we filter by event. You can see that when something is a recurring event, which apparently most community events are not, um, it will list uh, the additional ones. And so that's where, um, when it comes from the Cambridge Public Library, there's no way to reduce this, even when it's, you know, without a lot of programming that, um, you know, if no one else has done, probably shouldn't be something we try to figure out. Um, but um, if you were, you know, when the service provider makes it on the site themselves, they can just say it occurs on Tuesdays. And we can, you know, um, once we get smarter, we can do it right that we can just say it occurs on Tuesdays right now. Um, it will do the same thing as this, just with the upcoming events, but um, still keeps things pretty clear. All right, thank you. We've reached the top of the hour. I thought we were going to get cut off. All right. <laughs> Ciao. Shut us down. <laughs> we'll keep talking. I guess people have left and need to go to their other. Um, yeah, we got to go to the next session. Let's go. Ciao. <laughs> Thank you.